sun is shining, there's rainbows, there's red rain, it's dry, it's a good morning to be worshiping Christ in our homes and also here um, at the altar. Um, just a reminder that the office, church doors are closed, but if you need anything, please give the office a call. They will arrange anything that you need. Food pantry is still available, so if anybody would like to donate or know somebody that needs food, um, please give the office a call. Um, other than that, just keep the world, your neighbors, your friends, your family in your prayers. Make sure everybody's doing okay. Um, and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Um, if you will join me in the call to worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
we experience movements. Movements of joy, movements of sadness, movements of expressed courage and gallantry. And at this time in our worship, we come to God with our prayers. We are experiencing a movement of sadness in our world, as many have died from the coronavirus COVID-19. Thousands have been affected, and many families have experienced loss. For the pandemic that has enraged us, Lord, in thy mercy. Hear the names of these our brothers and sisters who are in need of prayer. Tamara Austin, Mary Chambliss, Penny Comparini, Eric Johnson, Susan Brock, Tim Austin, and many that we have in our hearts, in our thoughts, and in our prayers. Let us pray in a time of silent meditation. Most gracious and loving God, we come to the house of worship to bless your name. For each day of life, it's a miracle. And so on this day, for the miracle of a new day, for the miracle that it is Resurrection Sunday, for the miracle of the relationship that is ours through Christ Jesus with you, we give you thanks. We pray, O oh God, for this pandemic that has affected the whole world. In the United States especially, we have experienced its ravages. Dear God, for people that have been affected, we pray your blessings. For hospital staff, doctors, nurses, techs, who are in the midst a war, we pray your blessing. For patients who are affected, we pray your deliverance. Oh God, we trust in you. We trust in God, let him deliver him. And on this day, dear God, we celebrate the deliverance of Christ and his victory over death. Yes, dear God, we trust in you and we expect and pray for deliverance. These things we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. He who taught us to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
minds by the power of the Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The scripture for today comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. And it says, After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes was white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead to you, <clears throat> of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. May the words of the mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable unto thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our deliverer. Amen. The greatest story ever told is a story that we find when we open the Holy Scriptures. It is the story of God, and God is the main character throughout the book, or books. And when we come to the New Testament, there are four different evangelists that give the version of the greatest story that surrounds Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when we read the story, especially the story of Easter out of the Gospel of Matthew, we ask the question, what does this story teach? How is this story instructed? And that is because Matthew, the Gospel, has been treasured traditionally by the Church as a teaching Gospel, a way of discipling those who have come to Jesus, to be, be disciples of Jesus, proclaiming a message to the world. We find ourselves in interesting times this day. I've been here now 10 years, celebrating my 11th year. And every year, the day, Resurrection Sunday, started in darkness. Sometimes rushing to the supermarket to get the flowers for the cross. Gathering in our courtyard and praising and worshiping God for this glorious day. But today it's different, isn't it? Today we see pictures of our members of the pews. We are grateful to the worship team that week to week has practiced, rehearsed the songs, the message in order to proclaim it today. It's different. There is a feel of uncertainty, not knowing how long this virus is going to affect us, not knowing how many more will die, and not knowing 
which families or which individuals are affected by it. But in the midst of death, in the midst of despair, we, the human, the vulnerable, look and anticipate to hear a message with hope. God still reigns, even in the midst of death. And the greatest proof that we have of this is the resurrection of Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. One of my favorite Easter songs is the one that is titled, The Strife is Over, The Battle Won. And even as we experience the devastation of a crisis, of a plague, we ask God to be close to us and instill in us trust and confidence that through it all we will come out all right, through it all. I've always been fascinated with the Marys in the Bible. And on this one, it was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary who go in the dark to the tomb. They go with a sense of devastation, perhaps a sense of failure, but they go to the tomb in deep grief, having a great sense of loss. They had hoped that Jesus was the Messiah, the anointed one of God, the one that would lead them out of the miseries of life into the extravagant hope that we find in God. And yet, imagine these women walking in the dark, anticipating reaching the tomb. And when they get there, there is a great surprise. There is an earthquake. The ground shook, announcing that something special, something miraculously was going to happen. And they see an angel of God dressed in white with illuminating clothes signaling to the woman that the man they were witnessing came from heaven. And the word that the angel says to these women was, do not be afraid. It doesn't change the circumstance of life, but the message is one, don't be afraid. Every day, we see the increase of the death toll caused by the virus. Each day, we look toward the future, not knowing when we will return to some normalcy. And people